Hey, what's up, YouTube? It is Melanie back with Melanie Loves Death Metal, and happy Friday. Uh, not a collection update today. Going to be kind of a review, or just me talking, whatever you want to call it. So, it is Friday, so that means two things. It's release day, and it's a birthday, anniversary, or whatever you want to call it. So, today, as you guys can see on the overlay, the drop of the new Warm album is out. Uh, 20 bucks spin. Probably my most highly anticipated album of the year. Just going to throw that out there. So probably a very biased video right now. Um, if you're looking for more of a fair and balanced review, uh, this is not the video for that. Um, so with that said, yes, the new warm album came out today. And yes, I am very excited. Uh, this is a very good day. I love release day, especially when it's albums that I'm really looking forward to. But before we get started on that, it is also the 30th anniversary slash birthday, whatever you want to call it, of the release of this phenomenal, legendary album. One of my all-time favorite bands, as you guys know. So I figured I would shout that out because this will also be talked about when we talk about Warm as well. So Death Human, uh, again... Just one of the most amazing albums ever to be released. One of my favorite death albums, probably like top two. Um, Secret Face, as I mentioned in my last video about the new Outer Heaven uh, in tribute album. God, had a hard time thinking about what that was called. Uh, they did a cover of Secret Face. Uh, it's one of my favorite death songs. So incredible, incredible album. Uh, if for whatever reason you've never heard this album, listen to it. It's one of the best death albums and it's one of the best death metal albums so end of story so as you guys know death florida death metal band uh warm is also from florida uh their newest album is out today and that is called forever glade uh this is the tape version awful glare as always so i will take it out so you guys can see that album cover so the tape is currently out on 20 bucks band the cds are also shipping as well uh the vinyl is delayed until february as always, the vinyl is in just a really bad state right now. So I do have the vinyl on pre-order that will be coming. But in the meantime, I have the tape uh, and because I have no chill. Uh, so, yeah, it's a really nice J card. Got some cool artwork there. Uh, and then on the other side, there you go. So let's get started on this. Um, I did post on Instagram before I made this video. So if anybody has followed me on Instagram... You already know why I love this album uh, and that I had nothing but high praise for it. So this is a little bit of a spoiler alert. Uh, also, the tape is like this purple color. Um, so with that said, let's just prop this up right there. With that said, um, this is six songs. Um, I don't remember how long it is. It goes by so fast. It's a quick listen. It's 45 minutes long. Um and let's just get started with all the positives uh, because all I have are positives. My one negative is that I wish the album was longer. <laughs> and for me, it's a quick listen. It's 45 minutes long. It's six songs. The longest song on here is 11 minutes. And those 11 minutes, they go by really fast. Uh, and the reason for that is because I absolutely love this album. So there were two singles that came out before this album dropped. Those two singles were incredible. Um, Merc Above, The Dark Moor. And then Empire of the Necromancers. So those are the two singles that came out before this album drops officially today. Um, and just based on those two singles, I knew there was a phenomenal and fantastic progression from Gloomlord. Uh, Gloomlord was my favorite album last year. Gloomlord is also on a list of my all-time favorite albums. That album, I absolutely loved. Worm has a specific sound to them that I feel like they have now crafted as their own. Um, there's a lot of lot of hints of bands. There's obviously a lot of things that people often say that they sound like and, and have claimed to be ripoffs of other bands and whatever else. Just Let's just squash that right now. For me, if I were to start a band, I think a lot of my influences of how I would sound would probably be the bands that I absolutely love. And that would be death and obituary stuff like that if i were to join a prog if i were to make a prog band it would sound like yes and 
between the buried and me and and I, those influences would be in there on the new warm album you can hear influences and phantom slaughter has openly said in the new arcane archivist which i thought i had that just sitting right here i was going to show that off what the hell did i do with it well anyway oh here it is in the new arcane archivist which is a zine and i don't ever buy zines so i bought this spe zine specifically because they did a feature of phantom slaughter in this talking about forever glade and it's in the cool cool awesome interview uh, talks about Forever Glade, the recording process, how it came about. And it does mention, you know, hey, in the past, bands, people have said you sound similar to this band. And ultimately, that happens with a lot of the newer the newer uh, albums that come out, with newer bands that come out. There are influences from old school bands, and like those sounds come out. But however, for me personally, this album is warm. It is their sound. It is what they have molded into. It is what they have created as their own and it's to me a masterpiece <laughs> just gonna throw that out there gloom lord was a masterpiece this is a progression a step ahead of it like and for me that is incredible for something that i loved so much when it first came out and just held it up on a pedestal now there's a, another version out another progression another album out that is now up on a higher pedestal. <laughs> um, so with that said, what is this album? What does it sound like? What kind of music is it? So I would say, yes, it is a Death Doom album. A lot of people say Funeral Death Doom, Blackened Funeral Death Doom. There's black metal elements. There's a lot of everything in there. But really, it's a Death Doom album for me. It has a lot of elements in there that are just Death Doom. Uh, yes, there are influences of black metal, and he does talk about that <laughs> in interviews. And he... He goes in depth more about each song and in and, and, and the writing process and what influenced the writing behind this on, on Ken's uh, stream that he did. And there's a couple other streams that he's been doing recently. So Phantom Slaughter is the main man behind Worm. He is the one that wrote everything, I think, with the exception of a few things that he calls out in the J card of there and then probably on the vinyl as well. Uh, all the instruments. And then he was able to find a, basically a session studio drummer for this recording. Um just an all-around phenomenal artist, in my opinion. Phenomenal musician, writes incredible music, plays the guitar incredibly, plays the instruments incredibly. And then there's that added layer on here that I think is my absolute favorite part of this album, and that is the synthesizers. The synths in this album are what really, really make it for me, personally. They have immersed me and they have really grasped me into a lot of these songs. And just that is what really drove this home for me as being just by far my favorite album to be released this year. <laughs> so far. I mean, there's a couple other ones that are coming out this year. I know you guys are probably like, Jesus, Melanie, it's, it's October. Settle down. I know. There's there's a couple others I know that I have high high anticipation, high expectations for. But for me personally... This is a band that I have learned about within the last, you know, year or two and have been following, have become a fan of, and have just ultimately have built a very high respect for the musicianship and the process around it and just this music in general. So this album is truly a fantastic album. Uh, and like I said, my only negative to say about it is that it wasn't, it wasn't longer. It was 45 minutes. 45 minutes is a good Good amount. But for me, I am a person that does not mind if an album goes past an hour. <laughs> I don't often complain about that. And for me, I feel like uh, I would have been happy if this had been a two-part album. <laughs> like, three hours long. Just keep bringing it in there. <laughs> um, so that is just a very minimal complaint. It's not even worthy of even throwing that in there. But I figured I would just at least say one negative about it. The positives, obviously... Like I said, the synthesizers are incredible. I absolutely love the way that they've been layered into these songs. I love the very dark and very like spooky elements of the guitars. And they they start off immediately on Forever Glade, which is the intro song that is five minutes long. So quite the intro song. Uh, it does start out sounding a little bit like a funeral death doom album. And I will admit that. And you almost think that that's maybe how it's going to be. And then three minutes into the song, it picks up and it gets riffage and it just, you, yeah, it, 
it's there. The, the low end guitars, the chugs, everything. It's great. And that happens several times within this album. There are the slower pace and you think, okay, here's that death doom. Here's that funeral doom. And then all of a sudden it just escalates into this amazing like jam section, death metal album. It's great. Aside from the normal death doom albums that I absolutely love about music, I absolutely love about death doom. There are guitar soloing in here and the guitars are incredible and they sound crisp and they sound so good. The way this is mixed and the way the whole production sounds is incredible. And it's got the old school guitar riff soloing that reminds me a lot of this. <laughs> so is it coincidental that this was released on the same day that this was released 30 years ago? I have no idea. And the fact that they're both from Florida that shit just gets me, man. Like that really like goosebumps. Uh, and and for me, my my big thing that I said on Instagram that I really wanted to drive home about this was in 30 years, if people are talking, still talking about death metal, which I really hope they are, <laughs> you just never know. Um, and they're celebrating albums that came out on that day. I really feel like this is going to be one of those albums that fans like me and I'll still be alive. I'll be 67 years old. Um, I really do think that this album will be celebrated then 30 years from now. So that is my honest, my honest opinion. I was not told to say these things. I don't have any personal connection with, with Phantom or anything like that. I only just talked to him very, very small, brief, brief times through Instagram whenever I, tag worm and stuff and, and just this very small little tiny interactions that I've commented on Ken's streams. But for the most part, I have loved this music before I started to get really into the Instagram and the YouTube space. And, and now I'm here and I'm happy that I make these videos and that people are going to be able to watch this because my hope is, is that there are more people that will listen to this and there are more people that will say, yes, this is a great album. And yes, Melanie, I agree with you. 30 years from now, this album will be celebrated as one of the best Death Doom albums to come out in 2021. 2021. Wow. 2021. That's it, guys. That's all that I had to say today. Um, I love Fridays. Uh, release days are always so much fun. Uh, there is one other album coming out on 20 Bucks Spin, Dream Unending, I think is going to be phenomenal. Uh, and I do think I will probably do a video on that. I have a pretty good feeling about that album. I've heard a lot of good things about it already because a couple of people I know have, you know, they're friends with the bands and they've said good things about it already. So with that, these reviews are going to be coming few and far in between. I will say that. Uh, I, I don't call myself a reviewer at all because... At the end of the day, my words just, you know, I don't, I'm not the best speaker in the world, let's be honest here. And there are other YouTubers that are just so much better at this than I am. So, but since I love this album so much, I've had this album for almost a week now. I think I got this on Tuesday. 20 Bucks Spin is amazing about that sometimes. Actually, most of the time, I should say. Pretty much almost every pre-order I've ever gotten from them, I've always gotten, always gotten at least a week early. Um, and... I've listened to I've listened to this several times now. I don't even know. My favorite song, and I actually forgot to call this out, is my favorite song on the album is probably Empire of Necromancers. And I know that's one of the singles that came out. I just, I love that song. I love that song. And when you first hear a song that you absolutely love, it is hard to not have it be your favorite song on the album. But I would say the absolute favorite part of the album is how it ends. Uh, Centuries of Ooze is the title of the last song. It's nine minutes long and it ends in a way that just, and I said this, gave me chills. Uh, and when when music does that to you, it's incredible. Um, so listen to it. I, I won't say any anything else. I just want everybody to listen to it. Uh, and I hope, I hope that you guys like the album as much as I do. Uh, fully expect people not to agree with this. So again, <laughs> everybody's welcome to their opinions. I'm not going to tell you you're wrong because music is subjective. People hear things differently. So, but again, that's all that I had today. Thank you so much for all the support. Um, I, I don't remember when I was going to announce the 1000 winner, but that that's coming. I think I said next week, but yeah, so go ahead and check out my last video. If you want to enter into that the giveaway, I'm trying to keep it open. So as many people can enter it as, as much as possible. So thank you guys uh, and have a great weekend.